Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church on such a beautiful Sunday morning. We're so, so grateful you're here in the sanctuary and also at home or wherever you may be watching us virtually. Let's start by singing our opening chant led by Diane Vincent, someone I kind of just met the other day. Lucky by, man. By singing our opening chant, God is my source. God is my source, God is my power, God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings, God gives me everything I need. God is my source, God is my power, God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. God is my source. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks. For all my blessings, God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. Welcome. Welcome to everyone here in the sanctuary and to those of you who are joining us via Facebook Live and Zoom. We're just so glad you're all here. Uh, now, for those of you who are here in person, if you could just double check the, your cell phones or anything else that might make noise during the service are silenced, we'd greatly appreciate it. Ah, <sighs> So, let's join together in consciousness as we come together, just getting still and turning our awareness inward. turning to that place of the Most High within each of us where we can know and sense our oneness with all life, with all creation. Because truly there is only one life and that is God's life. And that presence of all goodness, all lovingness, infinite intelligence, infinite creativity is expressing itself throughout the universe, fully and equally present in all beings, places, and things, including in and as each and every one of us. I know that we're all expressions of God and we all feel the impulse of God every moment to experience its goodness, to feel good. And so I know it is that calling to know that truth of God's nature in us that brings us together today. And I know that every part of this service supports that intention. I know that we are uplifted by that vibration of love that we can feel in coming together virtually and in person. We feel that vibration of love that flows through all of those who are of service this morning. I know that we are uplifted and inspired by our music, by God flowing through Sam, Karen, our soloist Darius, and Diane as she leads our chants. And I know that we are absolutely awakened to the truth of our divine nature through Dr. Mark's message today. I know that he's that vessel through which we hear exactly what we need to hear to have that greater experience of God and God's nature in our lives. And so I'm giving thanks right now in this moment for all the healing and revealing, all the blessings that we experience during this time together. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is already so in the mind of God. And so it is, amen. <laughs> Amen. 
It is glorious to feel the Holy Spirit deep within, ever present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's presence filling me with love, and glorious to know that we are one. Spirit deep within, ever present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's presence filling me with love, and glorious to know that we are one. It is glorious to feel the Spirit deep within, ever present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's presence filling me with love, and glorious to know that we are So I invite you all to please rise as we join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So let's join in our congregational song, Make a Joyful Noise. Make a joyful noise. Lift your voices to the Sky. Make a joyful noise to your source and your supply. Celebrate as one. Grateful for this time we share. Celebrate as one. Unified as we declare. God is So please be seated. We're going to take these next five minutes to just get still and to get centered and commune with that presence of God that lies in all of us. So I invite you to just close your eyes. Take a nice deep breath and relax as you let that out. And for the next five minutes, I invite you to silently repeat the mantra, God is the love 
that I am. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that over and over, and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
So many choices in the world today Too many things can blow your mind And if you're looking for a simple song To sing along the way Remember, choose love Choose love Choose love Shining the light and choose love, choose love, choose love, and keep on shining the light and choose love. Life is a game that we're all free to play. You can hold it down or let it breathe. And if you're looking for simple truth to see you on your way remember choose love choose love choose love and keep on shining a light and choose love choose love choose love and keep on shining a light Choose love Only love can move mountains Only love can lead the way Love is always forgiveness So make that choice right here today And choose love Choose love Choose love and keep on shining a light and choose love, choose love, choose love and keep on shining a light and choose love, choose love, choose love and keep on shining. Shining a light and choose love. Thank you, Darius. Thank you, thank you. All right, good morning. good morning. Welcome. I can't tell you how good it is to see you in the flesh. It's wonderful, isn't it, to be together? Ah, oh, that's great. So in the Science of Mind philosophy, Ernest Holmes teaches us that God is everywhere equally present and that there is an ever availability of good. Uh, there is a higher, more spiritually evolved sense to life than what m many people seem to deal with on a regular basis. And what I see many people deal with on a regular basis is something like struggle, something like fear, something like getting by. We want to wake up to that life, the life that we live is spirit. The life that we live is the very life of God. Our expression on earth is actually spiritual. Um, there's a wonderful line in A Course in Miracles that says, I'm only here to represent him who sent me. And the way Mother Teresa would say this is she would say, you are God's only hands on earth. You are God's only feet on earth. You are God's only voice on earth. See, our existence shows forth the qualities and the attributes of spirit of God. We are here for God to shine through us like God shines no place else. So in Galatians, in the New Testament, it says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. I always like that. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And it goes on to say, you know, if you sow to the flesh, you're going to have trouble. But if you sow to the spirit, then you will reap everlasting life. So people like to look at the troubles, the effects in their world, and ask, how could God let this happen? Perhaps you've done that. I have certainly done that. You know, I see some... Magilla of a situation out there in the world and one of the reactions that passes through my head is how could God let this happen now the truth is that's not a very science of mind approach you know really it's not you know uh, people use what happens out here in the world as a reason to not believe in God 
Isn't that interesting? When I think it actually works the other way, that God could use what happens in the world the way we are, the way we behave in the world to not believe in us. You know, God could use what we do to not believe in us. God does not let stuff, bad stuff, happen, okay? We do. We do. We do. It says in the Old Testament that God gave Adam and Eve dominion over all that was in the garden. That means that here on earth, we have some input into how our life is evolving, how it's unfolding, how it's growing, how we're creating. So God doesn't let stuff happen. We do. We have, at some point, sowed to the flesh, and God has not been our priority. You know, if we've turned away from a spiritual way of living, a spiritual way of being, thinking, practicing, you know, why would we think we could reap the good of God while we violate the laws of God? I mean, think about that. So I know a woman who we were doing some work together, and over a period of months, we were doing some treatment, and she was... Um, working on creating her perfect, perfect job. And you know, we did a lot of work on this. And over time, she got her job. She got exactly, exactly, exactly the job we wanted. And this was after a number of months of treating and meditating and affirming and you know, trying to really uh, be quiet to listen to what spirit was guiding her to do. But you know, as it turned out, no sooner did she get the job when she actually started to sabotage herself in the job. <sighs> you know, how little things, little things, getting there just a little late, not quite completing projects, blah, 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 stuff like that. And so she came to see me again, and we were talking about this, and I said, you know, it sounds like you're really sabotaging yourself. And she says, I know, and I, it feels like I can't help it. I can't help it. And so I said, well, let's look at where does this come from? Why would we want something so badly? The universe says yes. We actually set about creating it, and then we blow it all up. Why would we do that? I believe it has to do with uh, a belief in undeserving, a belief in maybe I'm not worthy, a belief in I'm not enough. But i got to tell you, God does not ever look at us that way. God always sees us as absolutely enough because we are made in the image and likeness of God. So for you and I to believe that we are not enough is to believe that somehow God made a mistake and therefore God is not enough. Mm -hmm. Remember, um, we talk a lot about karma in our teaching here, which is for us basically is the law of cause and effect. You know, not just physically, but mentally. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking still about this woman who, who wanted the job, created the job, but then sabotaged herself. What it was is that, you know, she started to feel, I, I think she actually went in feeling separate from God. She didn't bring my oneness with God with me into the new job. What she brought into the new job was, I'm afraid God's not here. Uh, so let's be clear. God did not go anywhere. She did, you know, in her thinking. God is everywhere equally present, so God was right there. But she, in her own mind, had talked herself down rather than up. And this is one of the things that I think we don't realize. This is part of the spiritual power that we've been endowed with. It is our job on a daily basis to talk ourselves up, to believe in ourselves, to believe in the spirit of God within us is able to express and create and do and be more than it has ever been up until now. You know, the Old Testament shows us this belief of separation from God. You know, Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and then, boom, they were out of paradise, right? And in the New Testament, you know, the prodigal son believes that he can have an existence apart from the father's house. But it turns out to be a really lousy existence. See, we, what do we need to remember daily when we're meditating, when we're treating, when we're affirming, when we're just thinking about our life, you know, from where I think I need to... It's like something has to shift in me, in my thinking, from I think I need to get something from God to God has already said yes, God is already doing God's part. How do I become that consciousness where the greater good is naturally revealed? Where because my consciousness is the way it is, what happens out here is just the natural result and it's the result we want to have happen. You know, since it's mine already, I believe I have to shift from where I think I need to get something, right, to God is already doing it. The universe has said yes. It is mine to receive, to accept in a tremendous way. See, because we become that point in consciousness through which God manifests itself in the world, right? God manifests its good through you and through me. So, yes, there is a time on the path 
when we want our own way. I think early on, I want my own way. I do. I, I'll tell you the truth. I love having my own way. I love it when things go my way, don't you? Uh, but it, uh, frankly, it just doesn't happen nearly enough in life. Um, but, you know, okay, so I like it when things go my way. Uh, and, and I think that God is very patient. Spirit is patient with us. God says, all right, you learn. Learn your stuff, you know, learn how the universe works, right? So we go from using spiritual law to allowing spiritual law to work through us in a greater way. See, there's a higher, more evolved sense of life. The Old Testament very much teaches us about spiritual law, but in the New Testament, in the New Testament, there is this teaching about grace. And Ernest Holmes says that grace is the divine givingness of spirit, that grace is unmerited favor. And spirit, the infinite, only knows to give of itself to all of us equally, fully, freely. So the ever-present reality is that God is everywhere equally present, right? God is the power in our life that's always seeking to manifest. The only power is God, and here we are. So if we would realize that this... Uh, the I. You know, we talk about I, we talk about I am, but the I of each of us, the I of who you are is God, infinite consciousness. And we are no longer separate from God, no matter what we have believed. You know, if we have said, you know, forever, you can have said, I am not enough, I'm not enough, I'm not okay, I'm not okay, I'm not lovable, I'm not lovable. But this is the, this is the incredible thing about grace. It's the divine givingness of spirit. It's given freely to all of us. You know, so when, in a moment when we realize this is the truth about me, we get off that wheel of suffering, we get off that wheel of karma. There is a greater truth about all of us that will lift us up off the wheel. You know, remember, God is not mocked. The truth of us will not be mocked. We will not be dragged through error, separation, disease, lack, limitation, or at least we will move through them more quickly with greater ease. You know, when we know God is the I am of our being. You know, it's, it's, the disasters we see and even encounter are not because God lets them happen or because God is not present somehow, but because God is not realized, realized by us. God was not brought brought forward into awareness in these situations. And life was not lived from that place where God was not brought forward into our awareness. You know, if you call me or you call your practitioner, what we're going to do with you when we pray is we're going to realize that God is your life, your mind, your body. God is the wisdom of your being and your receptivity to truth. We're, you're going to try and tell us something that's out in your life, in the world. And we're going to know that beyond all those appearances, there is a spiritual truth, which if you were fully in possession of it, would set you free. And the practitioner is going to hold on to that belief for you, that spiritual truth for you, until it bursts forth into your experience. So of course we want to be released from an episode, a condition, an error. We want to open our consciousness to the power and presence of God, the ever availability of good. You know, Spiritual power, it seems to me, is based on our individual realization of the allness of God, that it's all God, it's all God, it's all God. You know, Mother Teresa used to refer to this as her beloved Jesus in all of his distressing disguises, which I think was such a beautiful way because, you know, for Mother Teresa, her path was devotion to Jesus, and it would be so tempting to see something difficult in the world and think that God was not present there. And so the way she articulated it was, ah, it's all just Jesus in one of his distressing disguises. Mm -hmm. Now, I will tell you that a teacher I really enjoy uh, and have gotten so much from many years was Ram Das. And Ram Das would say that when he saw someone that tempted him to think in a less than loving or godlike way, he knew that it was his guru in drag. Yeah, that's what, that's what Ram Das would say, that it was just his guru in a very convincing disguise to see, really? Are you really, really on the path? Are you really trying to be your best, most spiritual self? Um, if we put our human belief in what appears to be a power, it will act as a law and be a power in our life. You know, and most of the world does this because we're doing it from a place of undeveloped consciousness. And then we feel like we are at the effect of people and situations and powers outside of us. This does not make sense. 
if we're not cultivating an inner life, praying and treating and affirming and doing all those things that we do. And, and you know what we do. We pray, we treat, we affirm, we forgive, we practice gratitude, all that good stuff. We have to know that God does not overcome error. God does not overcome the error because that would make an error condition real. God is doing all that God is going to do right now. So every time we affirm and every time we meditate and every time we pray, our mind changes a little. We have to come into the consciousness that one with God, and this is us, one with God is a majority. Our human thought separate from God is capable of some real messy things. Um, I know this personally because uh, in my own belief in separation, I have created numerous great messes, which took a lot more work to clean up than I ever imagined. But you know, we are free because we know our God-given dominion. We have no life apart from God. External dominion, to have dominion out here in the world. And Ernest Holmes says, we believe in the control of conditions through the power of the mind. But to have dominion in the outer world, we have to first have dominion in our own inner world. We have to have dominion over our consciousness, our thinking, our own inner life. You know, because our good, the good that we desire in life, the good of love and health and prosperity and those things flows to us out of our consciousness. You know, if, if, if we don't have and if we are not cultivating a depth of consciousness, I think that makes it more difficult for the good of God to flow to us. So someone I know just had um, <clears throat> a major surgery, and they did great. Uh, and uh, ahead of the surgery, uh, our job was to cultivate the consciousness of all good, that the surgery is going perfectly, that the doctor is divinely guided and filled with infinite intelligence, that everybody involved is God's instrument of healing on earth, that I'm receptive to the good of the surgery, and on and on and on, all like that. So they had the surgery, it goes great, and the doctor said that they needed, that the patient needed to be written up as an example of really good healing. So I thought that was great, and the doctor wanted to take a little credit for that, and I'm more than willing to share. That's absolutely fine. Uh, but see, the thing I noticed was in this particular case, this person went in as a very, very prepared consciousness, right? Uh, they, they had been cultivating something very deep on a regular basis within themselves. And when they needed it, it was there. It was there. So are we going to continue to accept the human sense of consciousness, you know, and get what everybody else does, which is just sort of the race consciousness. It's, um, <clears throat> you know, it's what we see in the newspaper. Or do we deepen and accept that God is my consciousness, God is my life right now? You know, there's a meaning to this phrase, dying daily. I used to hear that, and, um, and it was an odd phrase to me. You know, I die daily. But it's really, I die daily to who I was, to yet I'm dying to the old me, to the past, the false beliefs, the old error thinking, uh, rigid thoughts, old habit patterns. That's what I'm letting die away. And I am reborn as the mark of God, as you are reborn as the you of God. So to begin our inner work this morning, I would just invite you to close your eyes and turn your attention inward. I'm going to start with some words that come from Ernest Holmes. So turning your attention inward, begin to breathe in a regulated manner. Just breathe normally in and out. And notice that with each breath, the area of your heart becomes fuller and richer and deeper. Because it really is at the point of our breath where the highest God and the innermost God become one God. And so now from Ernest Holmes, I refuse to worry about anything. I have complete confidence that the God who is always with me is able and willing to direct everything I do, to control my affairs, to lead me into the pathway of peace and happiness. I free myself from every sense of condemnation, either against myself or others. I lose every sense of anonymity. I now understand that there is a principle and a presence in every person gradually drawing him or her into the kingdom of good. 
I know that the kingdom of God is at hand and I am resolved to enter into this kingdom, to possess it, and to let it possess me. I know that the divine spirit is operating through me now. I know that I am not limited by anything that has happened or by anything that is now happening. I am entering into an entirely new set of conditions and circumstances. That which has no limit is flowing through my consciousness into action. I am guided by the same intelligence and inspired by the same imagination which scatters the moonbeams across the waves and holds the forces of nature in its grasp. I am conscious that the divine spark is acting through me. I am aware that the truth is making me free from any belief in want, lack, or limitation. There is no doubt or uncertainty in my mind. I have a feeling of security and of ability to do anything that I should do. I am not afraid of life or death, for I know that death is swallowed up in life. I know that every living soul will find complete emancipation sooner or later. And therefore I stand amidst the eternal ways and let the winds of God blow full and free around me. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. We let our prayer be a blessing on the earth, touching all people everywhere, affirming again God's perfect healing presence. And so with a heart that's full, I say, thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word into the law of mind action, knowing it's done, and so it is. Together we all say, amen. <laughs>